Okay, welcome back. All right, guys, I want to be extremely blunt and extremely upfront with you. This video and the subsequent video, it's going to be the last free version of this little, for instance, and tour on how we can build this totally from scratch. So I think I've given you more than enough information to basically make an intelligent decision to basically, quite frankly, sign up for my courses. If you're serious about learning this the right way and you're serious about making money, now, I want to share something with you. I have an all-access pass, and my retail value on that all-access pass, which includes all my current, I think I have about 26 or 27 courses on Udemy right now as of this recording, okay? So let's round that off to 25. So my, my fee for that, my retail fee for that is almost $1,800. Let's call $1,749, $1,800. In fact, let's go that one further. Let's say that the fee for that is $2,000. Let's say it's $2,000 for my all-access pass and, in addition to that, all future updates, which means seven years from now, when Adobe upgrades to, say, Adobe CS10, CS11, you're covered. You'll never have to pay for another video series by me on Udemy.com with that one-time fee. Now, I'm not talking about spending $2,000 or, more importantly, investing, but just let's dream a little bit. Let's say that I did charge $2,000 for that. That sounds like a lot of money to some of you, but guess what? In the scheme of things, I would like to think in the next six months to year to two years to five years to 10 years down the road, you're gonna make 10, 100 times that amount back. So that $2,000, and again, I'm not saying that my course, my all access course is going for $2,000, but it does retail on the Udemy site for $1,749. But again, I just wanna paint a picture for you. Let's say that you actually had to give me, Robert Farrell, $2,000 to learn everything that I know, meaning all my Illustrator tricks and all my Photoshop tricks and all my, uh, all my After Effects and all my uh, Dreamweaver and CSS. Is that cheaper than spending four years at a college? Absolutely. In fact, you can go to that four-year college and still not know what I know because I've been doing this a long time and I did a little, little, little side speech before we move forward. What I want to share with you is this. I live in New York City, very expensive city. I make tons of money doing what I do and I enjoy what I do because I work smart every single day. Every single mouse click, every single keyboard shortcut, I'm saving time, I'm squeezing the sponge. Now, the other thing I wanna share with you is this. I do have plenty of students every year that come to me who went to a four years college Great design schools like Parsons and Pratt and the New School or Caltech out in California or RISD up in Providence, Rhode Island. They went to these great design schools and I think those schools are great design schools, but they really are subpar when it comes to software training because A, they don't pay their instructors very much, no offense, B, they're not teaching proven techniques. I actually had students come to me from taking classes at one of these New York design schools, and I won't mention the name, but they said the teacher actually stood in front of the class and read it from a book. That's as bull pucky. You should not be spending thousands of dollars to go to a school to get a worthless piece of certificate to, and not know the software, because here's how it works. Okay, I have I, some of my major clients here in New York City is Hearst Publication. Every major ad agency in the city comes to me for training. Now, they're not going to hire somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. They're, they want to they want to hire people that work quick, fast, and those cheaper keyboard shortcuts. And more importantly, guys, they know technique. Software comes down to technique. Technique is based on experience. My 20 years of experience will share with you my technique. So before we move forward, I just want to say one final thing. Okay, my technique comes down to sharing with you how the software thinks, but more importantly, this is like on-the-job training. This is like, if you would have basically worked for me, I would say, okay, here's what we need to do. So I'm gonna sit with you day after day after day and share with you how I do it. And guess what? My system works because I kicked the tires. I made those mistakes 20 years ago. I pulled my hair out of two o'clock in the morning wondering how I solved this. So I'm cutting through all the nonsense. Don't read books. Don't look at other people's videos. Watch my videos because I will share with you if there's a better, faster, quicker way to get something done. Those are the techniques I share with you. So that's my little PSA and we'll move forward, okay? 
I, I really have passion for what I do, and I apologize about going off on a rant like that. But I see so many people that spend thousands of dollars, if not you know tens of thousands or a hundred thousand dollars, to go to these design schools, thinking they're going to get software schools, and they're they're pleasantly or unpleasantly disappointed that they were in jack. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to move forward by creating some a div tag and then some HTML5 responsive tags. So the first we'd want to do here, of course, is insert a wrapper tag. All great design starts with a div tag. Now, HTML design is still going to benefit from div tags on a limited basis because we're going to basically use our our um, HTML5 tag, container tags, which include things like the header tag, the section tag, the aside tag. We're going to use those tags to build the site, but div tags are still used in HTML5 semantic building of the site. So the first thing we're going to do is this. Now again, I'm in classic mode, okay? Not in classic mode, reset classic mode, and I just want to see my CSS palette up here. Of course, I want to see my tool palette, my property palette, which of course is under the window menu, these guys right here. So these are the only three palettes in the application frame, which is fine for right now as well. So based on these choices, I want to make sure that you're selected in the layout tab, not common tab, but the layout tab. I'm going to basically click right there. What does that say? That says insert div tag. Now, for those of you that are new to this, a div tag is simply a division, a section, a part of the site that's known as a div. Now, if you want to take a note on this, and the cool thing about watching this on Udemy is on the top right section over here, there is a section on udemy.com for taking notes, which I highly suggest you do. This way you don't have to write it on a piece of paper and then realize what note it went to what video. So Udemy has a process in, that they come up with. Every time you, make a, you watch a video on udemy.com, right to the right of it, you can ask a question about that particular video. You can also download that video to your computer. More importantly, you can write yourself a note. So if you're writing a note on what a div is, that's what it is. It's a container div, meaning that it contains content. In fact, you can put a div inside of a div inside of a div inside of a div. We're not going to do that in this course. So I'm going to basically click right here and insert a div tag. Okay, now there's nothing to select right now, so I'm just going to go with this default. Now, important step here, we're going to give this div an ID, which means the reason you ID a tag, and you can ID any tag, you can ID a paragraph tag, an H1 tag, you can ID an image. The advantage of identifying, IDing something, therefore you can talk to it differently. So what do I mean by that? Well, as an example, let's say that you had five black Canon, I'm sorry, Nikon. Did I say Canon? Oops. <laughs> Nikon. You had five black Nikon D4 cameras with the same lens and everything else. Well, how would you possibly, possibly tell them apart? The answer is you'd look at their serial number. So that serial number is their unique ID. So here's how an ID works. You can ID any tag. A body tag can have an ID, an H tag can have an ID, a paragraph tag can have an ID. So in this particular case, we're going to give this div tag an ID. Therefore, we can talk to this div tag differently from other div tags on the page. Now, again, if you want to take a note on this, when using IDs, and again, you can ID any tag, any of the 127 uh, tags that you find in HTML 4 and 5, you can ID those, but you can only use that same exact name once per page. That's why if you want to use that, that rule, that ID for more than one page, you use class tags. And we'll talk about that, of course, as the course progresses. So we're going to give this div tag an ID of wrapper, and I'm simply going to OK. Now, important step here. Okay. Since I have no content, Dreamweaver in this wisdom, and hopefully you can see this right here, this does say content ID for wrapper goes here. And that's exactly what we want to have happen. So we're going to put the information for building the rest of the site, but everything is going to be inclusive, included in this wrapper tag. In fact, notice how I spell that wrapper as in GIF wrapper, not as in yo-yo wrapper. Okay, not as in musical wrapper, as in GIF wrapper. I did have a student, by the way, spell this years ago, R-A-P-P, -P, and I say, oh, no, as in gift, as in gift wrapping. Now, some people, I just want to talk about semantics, that some people do call this the container ID. Totally up to you. You can call it the pickle head 
idea if you want. You can call it the Al Pacino Ghost of the Movie. You can call it the Amanda Pete if you want to. It doesn't make any sense, but you could. So very important step here, again, if you want to take a note on this, call your IDs what they contain, not where they're located. So as an example, don't have an ID div tag called my left dig. That's a real bad habit because what if you move it to the right or the client moves it to the right? So don't call your ID div tags where they're located, call them what they contain. So this wraps the entire site. So that's what we're going to do, okay? So now we're gonna set up our basic setup for our HTML5 tags, and we'll do that in our next video. And the next video is gonna be the final video in the free introductory to this course. And again, I highly suggest if you're serious about learning this the right way and making money, sign up for this course. It's not a lot of money, and it's an investment in your tool set, and it's an investment in your knowledge, and it's an investment in your future. So I'll talk to you in the next video. We will build our HTML5 tags in a unique, simple way without writing code from scratch. So talk to you in the next video. Again, my name is Robert Farrell. Thank you very much for being here.